And Jesus said, Man, Roger, I just sense that God is just lifting. Just lift your hands. I just sense God is just lifting your heart this morning. The word says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So, Father, I bless you for your son this morning. I thank you for him being in our midst. And, Father God, we thank you for freeing his heart and just drawing him closer to you by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I'm going to finish this message on change. I probably won't finish it, but, you know, I'm, just, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna finish this segment of it, amen? amen. But for those who wanna release part two of the three Ds of change, you, today's message is gonna be new, uh, three, new, three new Ds for, for change, but for those who didn't see it, you can see it on the whole page. Uh, I spoke on it July 31st, and um, I released the first three Ds of change, which, which was decision, desire, and being diligent, amen? So, Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you as we go into your word. We receive the change. How many people know that God wants to change some things in your life? He wants to change some things in your ministry. He wants to change some things around you. He doesn't want you to be stuck. And I love the portion of prayer this morning. I love Donna releasing how she felt it. Let me say something. The Bible says when you confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. You can't be healed holding stuff in. Now, it doesn't say confess everything to everybody, but when you can find a safe person, say a safe person. Safe person. Not a gossiping person. Not a, person. Not a messy person. <laughs> but when you can find a safe person that you can get stuff off your chest, when the, the beginning of deliverance and the beginning of healing is being able to talk. Get it out. Get it out. Amen? So it is healing. There's healing in that. Amen? So we're going to go with the three Ds of change today. Uh, number one, we're going to deal with uh, the word deepen. Deepen, D-E-E-P-E-N. And I put here, deepen your knowledge base for change. Get more knowledge and insight about what you want to change. Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So whatever area you're believing God for, whatever areas you want to change and you want to grow, whether you want to grow spiritually, whether you want to grow in uh, eating, uh, eating and being more healthy, whether you want to um, spend more time with God, more knowledge of the word, we have to deepen our knowledge base. And, and God has allowed us to live in such a time as this that we don't even have to go to the library. We don't have to sit up in the bookstore. Now, you can do these things. God has given us so much knowledge and so much information that you can stay in the confines of your own home and just look at your phone or get online or, or, or your tablet or whatever, whatever electric, electronic gadget you have. And you can find a wealth of information. Say a wealth. a wealth. Whether it's uh, finding the Hebrew and the Greek of the Bible, whether it's uh, looking up definitions, whether it's hearing other anointed ministers, there's so much that we can find, so much insight. So we don't have to be destroyed for lack of knowledge because most of us carry a, a, a wealth of knowledge around in our hands. Amen. And I always say, use myself because I don't want to make nobody mad. If I'm if I'm if I'm stupid, it's, I'm stupid because I want to be stupid. See, so he's talking about himself. It's the truth. Because everything, you don't even got to look it up. You can just talk into your phone and say, I want to know more about fasting and prayer. I want to know more about exercising. I want to know more about eating healthy. I want to le learn more about taking care. I want to learn to have more peace. You can find every scripture on peace by just putting it in there. Uh, give me every scripture on peace. Everything will come up. You ain't got to pull out no books. You ain't got to get your readers out. You ain't got to get magnifying glasses out. You don't have to get out anything. Everything is right there. So as we go forth to change, deepen your knowledge base. Mm -hmm. Amen. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Whatever area you're believing for change, educate yourself in that area. Say educate. Educate. Educate yourself. Amen. Amen. If you know someone's an expert in a certain area, pick their brain. Mm -hmm. How do you do what you do? How do you do this? How do you do that? How are you able to do this? Teach me. Show me. Amen? Amen. So number one is deepen. Number two is defend. We want to talk about defend. Everybody say defend. Defend. Uh, I want to uh, defend. I have here defend your mind against old thoughts. Say old thoughts. Old thoughts. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But just because we're new in Christ, because we've received Jesus Christ into our heart, into our life, it doesn't mean that the enemy doesn't play with our minds. It doesn't mean that the enemy doesn't try to bring up old stuff. It doesn't mean just because our spirit man is saved and renewed that our minds need to be renewed. 
So how do we get our mind renewed? By praying and staying before the Lord. We get our minds renewed by staying in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So I want us to defend. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. To defend my mind. To defend my mind. Against old thoughts. Against old thoughts. How many people have old thoughts? Oh, yes. I can put up. Everybody. Amen. Everybody. Very good, class. Listen to this scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. It says, for although we live in the natural realm, we do not wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to, uh, to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power. This is 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5 from the uh, Passion Translation. I'm going to read it again. For although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military uh, campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. So uh, when, when we walk in what God has for us to walk in, we're able to dismantle the plans of the enemy. The word, says for the, the word says in King James Version, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And most times the strongholds are in our minds. What people have released over us, what people have said over us, whether it's negative words, whether people say you'll never be anything. And as a young person, I used, to be, I used to break the power over. You have the power to break negativity in your life. Amen. And sometimes you've got to fight against your own thoughts that come against you. Not Maybe nobody's speaking something against you. Sometimes you're just going through a battle war in your own mind. Right. Right. Amen? So you got to fight. Yes. When the music's not playing, you got to fight. Right. When prayer, the prayer atmosphere's not going forth, you got to fight. When you're not sitting under the anointing, you got to fight. But God has given you everything that you can fight. He said, I teach your hands to war and your fingers to fight. He said, if you put on the whole armor of God, that you can stand against the wiles and the tricks and the schemes of the enemy. That's Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Amen. Amen. So God has given us. He didn't just place us here uh, helpless. He didn't just place us here without a help. But he placed everything. He said, I've given you everything that pertains to life and to godliness. That's right. That's right. I've given you everything in my word. That's why the enemy does everything to keep you away from the word because he doesn't want you to know who you are in him, amen? But the word says it's in him that we live and move and have our being. Give God a praise for that. This man is the defense behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every, every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. So everything, that's what, everything, anything that comes against you, your children, you got power in the name of Jesus. You say, I'll break the power of that in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't receive what you, the lies you're bringing to my mind. I don't receive the lies you're trying to speak over my family. Right. I, don't, I don't receive the lies. Amen. And you got to rise up in power. you got to defend your mind. Mm. How many of you have children or, or kids around you that you love? You let me, if something comes against your children, you are quick to defend and to block and to guard and to, to, to defend. Amen. So we got to learn to fight for ourselves. Because let me tell you something. Because of the anointing that's upon your life and because of what God has called all of us to do, the enemy doesn't want you, none of us to do nothing. He wants to keep you bound. He wants to keep you depressed. He wants you. He wants to continue to make you feel bad about yourself. Uh -huh. God says you're worthy. The enemy says you ain't worthy. Yeah. Right. He says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. The enemy says you ain't fearfully and wonderfully made. You know what you did last night. You know what you was looking at. You know, you know what I'm saying? So the enemy always is always at war. Yes. But we have to come and be under anointed place so we can know and we can break that stuff off. And I'm yes. telling you, the, the best thing we can do to break that stuff off of us is to spend time with God. Because when we come to church, we just spend a very small amount of time in church. But it's what you do when you leave church. Spending time with God. Talking to God. Being in prayer. Staying connected. While you're doing whatever you're doing, staying connected to God. He said, if you draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And our last D today is disassociate. See, disassociate. Disassociate. Disassociate from the past. Philippians 3.13 says, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So we have to come to a place where we make up in our mind that we disassociate from the past. No matter who left us, no matter who hurt us, no matter who spoke against us. And let me tell you something, it's not easy. 
takes work. That's right, amen. It takes perseverance. It takes staying in the face of God. It takes what I do. I say, God, I want to be like David when he said, create in me a clean heart mm -hmm. and renew a right spirit. Lord, I, let, let, cleanse my heart. Cleanse my motives. Let me see myself. Let me, let me, let me release anything, anything, any feeling. So sometimes you can feel some type of way. But we have to choose to say, you know what? Whatever the situation is, him, her, whatever the case, it's not worth my anointing. It's not worth what God has placed uh, the call of God upon my life. It's not. It's not worth my peace. Amen. It's not worth my joy. Amen. You have to. Sometimes you have to love people from a distance and say, you know what, God, they're your sons, they're your daughters. I'm not going to try to fix them. I'm not going to try to figure them out. Right. You go. Amen. You'll go cuckoo for cuckoo puffs trying to figure people out. <laughs> Can't do it because right. you don't know. Right. Amen. Amen. But this is from the past, from past mistakes, past failures. Past sins, past hurts, past disappointments, past sins, past misfortunes, past relationships, divorce, separation, death, um, miscarriages, abortion, whatever the case may be, we got to learn to disassociate from the past. And thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Because because Jesus Christ out on the cross, he was the perfect sacrifice. I love St. John 3, 16 and 17. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So God knew everything we were going to do before we did it. So he, he made way. He made preparation and said, You know what? I'm going to forgive her. I'm going to send my Son. I love this world so much. I'm going to forgive them. And let me tell you something, when you disassociate, sometimes you gotta, you got to put some things in action. That may mean uh, taking people out your phone. Y'all right. got quiet. <laughs> sometimes if you stay connected to the wrong people and you keep, you keep uh, feeding them through an email, through a text, and it's not healthy, you got to break that unhealthy connection. And sometimes you gotta just just do a clean sweep and don't say, you know what, I'm just gonna just 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 fade out. Right. Just phase out. That's right. Work it down. Because at the end of the day, you have to do what's best and healthy for you. Amen. 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 So that, that's my, my message today. One thing I want to leave, this is a thought I really want to leave with you today as we talk about change and whatever that change may be for you. I don't know where that change is for you. I don't know where God is trying to take you or position you or whatever unhealthy He's trying to take out of your life or whether it's something natural. Or physical or emotional or a person. I don't know, but you know. Hold it. How many people, you don't have to tell me what it is, but how many people know that God's really trying to shift some things and change some things in your life and rearrange some things in your life? Amen. 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 I want to leave you with this thought because this has been resonating with me all week. I wrote here, don't talk about, complain about, put your mouth on nothing or no one you're not willing to change. What you mean, Pastor? What you talking about? I will. Thank you. Don't talk about, complain about, put your mouth on nothing or no one you're not willing to change. Now, I'm taking, thank you for yourself. You say, oh, I'm so tired of this weight. I need to lose weight. They're making clothes smaller. I can't get in my clothes no more. I don't know what's going on. The washer may be shrinking my clothes. The dryer may be shrinking my clothes. I don't know what's going on. You complain, complain, complain. But we need to do something. Change up. Yeah, all right. So you did one thing. Or you're married to someone. And you always complain about your husband. Complain about your wife. Let me tell you something. Don't do that. Because if you're in it with somebody, you don't need to be complaining about them. Because you're working against them. I'm not saying sometimes they don't get on your nerves. But I'm saying it's just like a ministry or church. I'm going to tell you like this. If you're in a ministry or church and you're talking about it and complaining about it all the time, you don't need to be there. Because you're working against it. Ooh. I don't believe he said that. He said it. Oh, I don't like when Pastor Mark do this. I don't like when Pastor Mark do this. You, you, you can't do that. Because you're working against it. If you're on the team, not just ministry, your family team, you got you to pull it together. I'm not saying you don't get upset sometimes. I'm not saying some things will upset you. But I'm saying when, all, when you always... Who wants a friend? Who wants a husband or wife and you always talking bad about it? That doesn't build a relationship. 
You're working against them. I don't need nobody in my life. I'm going to always talk about because it's not helping me and it's not helping them. So whatever you're not willing to change, don't complain about it. You say, oh, I'm tired. Of, I'm tired. I ain't getting fed over there. I ain't getting help. Well, why do you keep going? It's like going to a restaurant and you always say the food is bad, but you keep going back to eat. Why would you keep going back to the same restaurant over and over again, paying your money, tipping the waiter or waitress, and then you come out complaining about it? Get a different restaurant. Or a doctor. You say, I've been going to this doctor 50 years and I feel like I'm not getting no better. Get a new doctor. So why do we complain? We like to hear ourselves talk. Sometimes I'm in air, sometimes I'm in, in places that I, I don't talk and people say, Oh, he's so quiet. I'm like, they really don't know I'm not quiet. I'm just listening, I'm observing. And I just listen to people's chatter. And people of the world, and we gotta watch the church, are very, very negative. Mm -hmm. They are. Very, very negative. And I said, Lord, I'm so grateful. I, I'm telling you, I'm very grateful for life. I'm I'm grateful that I'm here. I'm grateful that I feel good. I'm, I'm just very grateful. Amen. Everything's not where I want it to be, but I'm grateful because the word says, in all, in everything, give thanks for this the will of God in Christ. And I thank God that, you know, we say, oh, this ain't happening, but thank God it's not worse. Yes. So I'm challenging you to stop complaining about your situation. Stop murmuring about your situation. Stop murmuring, murmuring about what you're in and do whatever it takes to bring change. I did a teaching uh, months ago, no action. Change. No change. Right. You can't. You you cannot do that. You can't put people down. You can't put th things down. And you got to be willing to change it. Amen. And you know why we don't hear mess like that? Because then it, it puts the buck right back on you. Right. I'm so tired of this house. I I can't walk through the door. I don't. I'm tired. What do you, What do you start changing? Right. That's so true. I'm tired of not having enough money. Start your business. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Better yourself. That's what? Good. What? How many people? How many people? I'm gonna take another hand. How many people know there's a business on the inside of you, but you're really having to do nothing with it? Okay. Your business could be the answer to your prayer. You prayed, and God said, "Okay, you don't prayed a hundred years now. Put now, let's get the business off the ground." Despise not the day of small beginnings. Amen. Little Sonya who comes here. I call little Sonya because I've been knowing her forever. She, she, she makes jewelry with her hands. And she makes little bracelets and stuff. And then nice little stuff. she got a good eye for it. And um, she's a little hustler. She'd be sorry. I'd be like, well, I'm sorry. I said, sorry, these people ain't like coming to the store to see you. They come to see me. She'd break them out of the door. I made bracelets. I got bracelets right here. But she's selling. She's moving her stuff. At the level of where she said, I'm like, Sonia, they didn't come here to see you. I'm not back. But I, I love that. I just messed with Will. Will, he works with her too. But I'm just saying, you got to be a hustler. Yeah, that's right. Amen. You got to move. You got to open up your mouth. Mm -hmm. A closed mouth doesn't get nothing. Wow. <laughs> so whatever you're complaining about, you, you, you're tired of your house, the way it looks. You're tired of whatever. What are you doing to make a change? My mother used to say, put up or shut up. Amen. So that's my that's my word to you. I, I challenge you to make some changes. I challenge you. You're in a you're in a ministry. You're in a house that's not going to just give you a good message to go home. But I always shake you. Some of you have been shaking to get your house in order. People are getting the houses in order. So whatever it is, and this all is you say, well, this is all representative of God because we represent God. That we I want to give I want to rep represent God well. Amen. Amen. So that's it today. God bless you. I love you. Love the Lord. Have a blessed day. Keep on changing the three D's to change. Amen. God bless you.